Today, I'd like to take you guys on a little adventure with me as I demonstrate how I search out some of my locations for shooting Milky Way photos. The number one question I get all the time is what method do I use to work out how to get the Milky Way in the background of my images? Well, the interesting thing about that is that I start the process long before I jump in the car to travel to the location. I say to people all the time that to be really successful at night photography, you need to acquire at least a basic understanding of astronomy. A lot of people laugh when I say that, but I can tell you that these days, all I need to get my positioning right for my nightscapes is this little gadget. Yep, it's a compass, but I'll get back to that later. You see, the sun, moon, stars and planets all do one complete revolution around the south celestial pole every day of the year. The South Celestial Pole is the position in the southern sky around which everything rotates. This is well illustrated when viewing star trail images. Of course, in the Northern Hemisphere this is reversed and the stars rotate around the North Celestial Pole. So, how does this help me understand how to get the Milky Way lined up behind my images? Well, once you realise how this continuing cycle occurs every day of the year, just like clockwork, you'll soon realise that there are repetitive patterns that emerge. To better illustrate this, I'd like to show you a program I use all the time to work out this stuff. I'd like to introduce you to Stellarium. This is a program which is available on desktop and mobile platforms, and I use it all the time. So let's have a bit of a look at it. OK, guys. This is the Stellarium mobile app. This is the Android version. Now, uh, when I first open up the program, it shows me what time it is, which is approximately 5 to 9 p.m. in the evening, sitting down here, 2054, and it opens up facing south. Now, if I want to move that around, I just drag it with my finger, and I know the Milky Way is going to rise in the eastern sky, but I might not be too sure exactly where that's going to be. So I'm planning to go out tonight. It's March, so it's early in the season, at about... 2 a.m. and see what happens. So all I have to do is click the time here and it says drag sky to move in time. So I'm just going to drag the sky and you can see the cursor down here is moving. Uh, you can see the stars rotating up and the Milky Way beginning to rise in the eastern sky. Now here, here we are at just before 2 a.m. and you can see very very clearly the Milky Way core here in the sky and the compass bearing. So look at here, it's about 110 degrees east. So all I need to do to get my uh, foreground to line up with the background Milky Way is to line, point my camera to 110 degrees in the eastern sky and there it's going to be. From there, all I need to do is just move my camera position to make sure the foreground subject is lined up to either one side or the other and that's how you get your pictures. Now, if I was to move that sky further along, in time so there we are we're after 3 a.m now you can see the milky way has gone a lot higher into the sky and further to the northern area of the sky it's actually going around in a circle around the south celestial pole but you can see what i'm saying there about getting the milky way nice and low down to the horizon uh, just after half past one there and there's our compass bearing 110 degrees so once we have an idea of the compass heading we're halfway there all we need to do is find a location and set up the shot. So, come on, let's give it a go. Okay, so here we are at one of my favourite spots to shoot the Milky Way. You can see this awesome windmill and water tank right on the edge of the road. It's easy to find, but don't fall for the trap of assuming you can get back here in the dark. I always put my locations in my trusty GPS here. And as you can see, it's the biggest one I could find. Believe me, it helps a lot having that large resolution screen. I have a large library of locations marked in here, and my method is to label them in a way I understand. You can get confused if you name similar locations with the same titles. For example, windmill on side of road, or old tree in paddock. You get what I'm saying, don't you? There are quite a few windmills on the side of the road. Anyway, here's how I go about the process from here. I look at the scene before me, I get a compass and look for the direction as per the coordinates I obtained in Stellarium. Remember, it said that at 2 a.m. tonight, the Milky Way galactic core would be rising in the eastern sky at a compass heading of 110 degrees and about 30 degrees above the horizon. Everyone has a compass on their phone these days, and the best ones give you a reading in degrees. 
zero degrees being north, 180 degrees south, etc. Remember, the whole point of doing what we do is getting a great shot, right? So often we do all the hard work scouting locations and working out all the hard stuff, but unless we get a great composition, our final shot may not be as good as we'd like. Anyway, once we've worked out the frame we'd like to capture, all we need to do is make sure the foreground subject lines up with the as yet invisible Milky Way that we know will be right there at 110 degrees tonight at 2 a.m. or thereabouts. When I was here another time, I also captured some star trails, and as I wanted to make sure I got the full circle of the rotation, all I needed to do was face the camera in a southerly direction, and a good wide-angle lens does the rest. Okay, so I've moved to another favourite spot of mine. Now, this is private property, so I've gone to great lengths to make sure it's okay to be here on this property. I find that the vast majority of landholders have no problem with photographers being on their property, as long as they shut the gate and leave it the way they found it. I spend a lot of my time talking and sharing my images with farmers and landholders, and I find that they have a genuine interest in what I'm doing. So, once again, you'll see the same process in action here. I want to capture these rusty old farm machines with the Milky Way core rising in the sky behind. Remember what we did before with the compass. 110 degrees in the eastern sky. Not very complicated, is it? Now, this leads me to a very interesting twist in this process. The Milky Way core doesn't stay in the eastern sky for the whole year. In fact, it progresses across the sky throughout the year finally laying down, so to speak, in the southwestern sky in about September, October. Now, I know that because I've been shooting the night sky for years, but anyone can work this out for themselves by simply looking at Stellarium and entering the month, day and time. This old loader is a great subject for night shooting because it's out here in the middle of a paddock with excellent views in every direction. So, at this time of year, I'll shoot facing east, but later in the year, I'll shoot facing the southwest. Awesome, two shots for the price of one. Not only that, I can get some great star trails by facing south. So, what appears to be a difficult and complicated process at the beginning becomes a very simple and repeatable action every year. The Milky Way and all stars in general will always appear in the same place at the same time year after year. Many times I'll go on a reconnaissance mission and mark locations on my GPS, noting the most favourable direction to capture the Milky Way or other stars, depending on the layout of the land. If there's an old ruin with an open view to the east, then I'll go shoot that early in the year when the Milky Way is visible in that direction. If it's clear in the opposite direction, I'll wait till later in the year. If I see an exposed tree on a hill, I'll work out a clear direction path and plan to visit when the time is right. There are lots of different apps available to assist with finding the Milky Way and what I'm demonstrating is only one way of achieving this. Photo pills for iPhone is very popular also. So that's how I go about planning a night photography shoot on location in the daylight. I talk a lot about not leaving home without a well thought out plan and not leaving things to chance. You know, if you don't go with a plan, well, you'll likely end up with very little to show for your journey. Okay guys, until next time, I look forward to hearing how you go with your nightscape shooting. Take care.